Hi, welcome to the Deakin University Open Day course information session on dance and drama. I'm Misha Myers, the course director of Creative Arts, which includes visual arts, photography, dance and drama. And I'm here today with my colleagues from the dance and drama team. Hi, I'm Sean McLeod. I'm a senior lecturer in dance and I teach uh, improvisation, choreography, performance and also interdisciplinary studies. And my name is Miles O'Neill and I lecture in the theatre department teaching theatre making and acting and acting for screen and acting for stage and acting, acting, acting. <laughs> so before we get started, we're just going to start with an acknowledgement of country. Deacon would like to recognise the various traditional lands on which our campuses are located. We acknowledge the land, waterways and airways of the Kulin Nation and the Gunditjmara peoples. We acknowledge the elders, past, present and emerging, of all the lands on which we work, study and live, and we pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. So today, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk through the course and why study at Deakin, uh, take you through looking at the facilities, looking at the course structure and how to apply, which I'm sure you're all wondering about, and um, the different entry requirements and pathways to applying and different kinds of support you would find at Deakin as a student. So first, why study at Deakin? And we'll talk about all that Deakin has to offer, but also why study creative arts at this time. And I know some of you, for some of you, it'll be your lifelong dream to pursue your passion. And this is your chance to really go for it. So let's talk about this. When you're in a position where you're following your passion, the thing you're most curious about and interested in, you're using all your faculties and playing to your strengths. Opportunities start to open up because people are seeing you achieve your best. So let's talk about this. Why Deakin is the place to go for it and why creative arts? Firstly, we aim to raise aspirations and to do this, we expect as much of ourselves as we, are, we do our students. Creative Arts at Deakin is known for its excellence, not only in Australia, but globally. In 2019, Deakin was ranked in the top 100 universities worldwide for its performing arts, according to QS World University rankings by subject. This is determined by feedback we receive from industry employers and our academic peers. And I'll talk more about how our courses are close to arts industries and model our learning on the current behavior and work practices in these industries to ensure you graduate with the best foot forward into a professional career in the arts. So the course is, um, has an overall structure which is shared by all the disciplines in the creative arts. And we have moments where we have interaction uh, between the disciplines. And um, another part of the course where there's uh, interaction with disciplines outside of the creative arts. So you have the chance to really build a community and a network with people across the creative arts and disciplines. So to start with, we start in year one with uh, looking at um, creatives. We have three creative studios going across the three years. We start with the first one. And again, there's lots of interaction between looking at kind of core concepts then we have discipline units, which we'll come to in a moment and look at those closely, but these are where you start to drill down into some discipline specific skills. And then you have an elective that you can take from another creative arts discipline to give you some broader skills. And then you have free electives. So you have six of these free electives across the course. In the second year, you have a more intensive creative studio. So two credit points, this, this creative studio unit. And then you have another set of discipline units in your discipline focus and more uh, space for electives. And those electives can be taken from anything across the university. They're free electives and that's a place where you can really define your specific pathway, something that you're really interested in um, and, and outside of, of the creative arts, but also things that complement it really well, like writing for instance, or. Uh, film, um, so you know, design, whatever it might be for you that you feel like um, will help you to shape your particular career. In the third year, the focus really um, shifts to 
your independent work and, and, and getting you ready to go out into the world and begin your career as a, a creative in dance or drama. And so alongside the intensive creative studios where you're making work, that's the other thing to say about these studios that you're really in those studios developing performance work, work that is performed. Uh, work that's performed for an audience. And increasingly that audience becomes a public audience in um, the third year. In particular, we end with a festival showcasing student work. And alongside that, you have these other units, Creative Career Context, where you're building um, a set of, um, like a portfolio, a CV, uh, a showreel. You're, you're working on developing assets that will uh, provide you with things to take to future employers, funders, producers, grant applications to really get your foot out the door and into working professionally. The exhibition and performance unit is working alongside all of your colleagues across the creative arts to develop that festival showcase of graduate work. So you'll learn all the management skills, the business and management skills of producing a festival and putting your own work up. Um, and you'll work on that, as I say, with a, a team of, of people. And again, you still have space for these free electives. Sean and Miles, could you tell us a little bit about the focus of each of these courses? In dance, we have our home base in contemporary dance, but we also like to think of ourselves as being inclusive and diverse as well. So we try and give the dance program uh, a lot of a social context beyond only contemporary dance. But students primarily will be studying contemporary dance technique, uh, choreography and performance. As well as that, we are hoping to get our students to think critically about dance practice and, and how they can uh, engage with it on a theoretical level as well as a performance and practical level. I'll take over for drama. Uh, broadly, I would say that the focus of our course is to teach you how to be a maker and uh, how to be a maker through the lens of theatre. But as you'll find, as I've found that, that uh, skill set that you develop really broadens you out to so many different avenues that you can take once you've developed those skill sets. I studied this drama, uh, I just studied drama at Deakin and went off and started a theatre company and toured all over the world with these skill sets that you'll see on the slide that I gained uh, through doing the course. So I learned to be a creative uh, contemporary performance maker through gaining um, a whole set of skills that Misha has explained there and which Sean also explains that the ideas really cross pollinate into uh, the other disciplines. So you get these skills that allow you to really sink into the industry and um, also to be grounded in the foundations of acting, of improvisation, of collaborative theatre creation, of text analysis, uh, theoretical explorations of plays and um, movements and happenings and makings and site-specific focuses and applied performance focuses and um, more than anything it's just really fun doing this course uh, so yeah I'll stop there Thanks. Thank you, Miles and Sean. I'm going to go back actually to the structure just a moment because one of the things um, I mean, really I want to talk about a little bit more about what happens in these studio units because and, and to say that, you know, while there's absolutely an emphasis on preparing you to be an artist, it is also a university program and there's an academic um, academic element of the course and it prepares you for those pathways. You might decide that um, like all three of us, you go on to do a PhD um, or you go on to do masters, but a lot of the outcomes, the assessment of the course does build towards those professional modes that you need to present yourself professionally, but we also have equally these, you know, modes, academic writing, academic presentation, um, so, for instance, in Creative Studio 2A, you'll learn essay writing. Um, you'll look at case studies of uh, different kinds of theater and dance practice. 
um, which you're exploring in the studio and starting to learn about composition. Then in, in 2B, in Studio 2B, you'll develop a proposal because you'll start working to an external brief. So, you know, you always have to work both with your own passion and inspiration, but you also need to respond to perhaps a funding call, or you need to work with a director, you need to work with a, cho uh, a choreographer and their vision. So we also prepare you in thinking about those different roles of the audience, the different audiences that you'll encounter. So in ACA 101, we really start to look at the different roles of the artists. In ACA 100, you, you know, we start to look at um, core concepts. We make self portraits, um, audio, autobiographical works. You're really thinking about what do I want to say? What can I say about the world that I live in? The, the, the course in some sense, it, it's spiraling. Your development through it is spiraling and you're picking up these themes and skills as you go to building to that third year where it becomes more about launching you in the world. So I just want to pick up back on that in the structure. And I'm going to move back ahead now to look in a little bit deeper at these discipline units in the course um, where we've been talking on uh, about the, the specific discipline specific skills that you, you will have. So those creative studios, that's where you are going to absolutely deepen into those discipline specific skills, but really with an emphasis on the making and developing of performance work. Um, here in the discipline units, we look at what are those kind of basic foundational skills that you need for dance and for drama. Just to say the kind of purpose and aim of this in the course is, you know, to do that deepening both for your degree, but you also have the opportunity to choose two units at, you know, minimum of two, you could take more. Now dance and drama complement each other really well. You might decide that you want to do all four because you know, all of these are going to help you develop specific skills for each of those disciplines. So that's another thing you can kind of craft in, in a sense, your own kind of minor pathway of study. But you might be interested in taking visual arts or photography units as well. And photography is another one that's just an excellent skill to have uh, to actually be able to promote your work and develop um, you know, so thinking, you, you're thinking about that. What are those kind of skill sets that you'd like to build into your portfolio? Um, also, you know, to create that unique pathway that complements your career aspirations, because, you know, every artist these days, you have to have a lot of different skills under your belt and you can take those, that degree into so many different directions. As Misha was saying, the core units are really where we focus on the practical choreographic skills for the discipline of dance and the making, lots of making. But in these discipline units uh, that you see in front of you here, we give some more um, sort of a specialized perspective to, to uh, dance study and uh, look at some context for studying dance, which um, we think kind of help broaden the scope of what we do. So for example, in year one, we have uh, dance and screens, uh, which, a, a terrific new unit in which students look at how they can create their own dance videos, whether that's in the context of contemporary dance in what's called screen dance, or students are often interested in working into something like music video where they can um, respond to you know, popular music. Then in second semester, we have exploring dance styles and in that unit, we will choose from a list of different potential styles. Um, this year, it's going to be hip hop and Indian dance. And, and students will actually learn how to uh, dance those styles practically with expert teachers teaching them. But we will also look at a, a transdisciplinary choreographic process in, w in which we look at how the values from different cultures can actually be brought together in a choreographic process. Then in second year, we have improvisation in movement and dance and improvisation is such a foundation for contemporary dance. And this looks at how you might actually cultivate uh, an awareness and uh, a sensibility through your own body in the, the practice of improvisation. And we look at it in uh, group context, we look at it on solo context, but we also look at it as a kind of a, a, a performance modality, something that you can perform. 
And then finally, we have dance beyond the studio. And this is where we're trying to make dance engage with social context beyond the studio, beyond the theater. So, uh, and in which dance can make a real difference, whether that means working with old people or working in an activist kind of uh, setting or um, uh, a lot of different contexts in which students can uh, try and design a project that engages with people in a community and use their dance skills to really activate, engage, enliven and hopefully make a difference. I'll pick up on the drama side of things, uh, starting with ACP 109 improvisation. Well, you start there because it really uh, opens you up and loosens you up to the idea of creative play and of saying yes to ideas and of lifting up each other and importantly to listening to other performers and other makers. And that can be really focused on a thing, you know, the sort of Saturday Night Live, uh, Groundlings, American style of improv that you'll know. And once that's set down, we, uh, we move on to acting studio, which is more of the classic actor training disciplines. We skim across the whole 20th century and we introduce you to method acting uh, Stanis through Stanislavski and Strasberg and Stella Adler. And then we move into more physical embodied practices uh, through Lecoq training, neutral mask. Uh, we introduce you to the first uh, exercises of Anne Bogart and Tadashi Suzuki's work with viewpoints and opening up to impulse and energy and creative play through the body and, and engagement with space and really cracking your mind open to the idea of the theater and the space that you'll be working in and the stage as a frame. And then once we move on from that in second year, you're introduced to text, the magical text, the play, the canon. Uh, you confront all those magical plays that have uh, been written through the 20th century and you approach them through a different set of rehearsal practices that can either complement or challenge those um, plays. Finally, in second year with theatre and creative technologies, as it says, it's about combining theatre and technology. And theatre is always uh, colliding with technology, as so much contemporary art and art in general is. They're always uh, at the nexus of the two. And um, with theatre and creative technologies, we're looking at screen, we're looking at sound-led theatre, we're looking at... Uh, motion capture, we're looking at all sorts of different contemporary technologies that can enrich your theatre making experience. I would say you need to be curious, courageous and connected. Curious because the arts are always pursuing the unknown and finding ways to articulate things that the world may not even have the words for yet. Or uh, answers to questions that we didn't even know we had questions about yet. And courageous because a creative career is not just a clear cut path. It can take a long time to develop. Many artists pursue portfolio careers where they are um, doing many different jobs and you know, working many different choreographers, working with many different directors, working different roles, applying those skills, uh, doing workshops, teaching. So that's a, you know, when we say about it's not a clear cut path um, and you need lots of different skills and the skills to manage that. Um, also connected because, you know, it's, you're importantly not on your own on that path, especially in dance and drama. One of the gifts that artists bring to the world is connecting people. And that's something that we definitely have seen in this time during the pandemic. Artists also need one another and together artists can strengthen one another's visibility, influence and access to resources. Traditionally in dance and drama, we have relied upon collaboration and working others with others to realize our aesthetic vision and goals. Um, so that's just a way that we work, but it's becoming increasingly important that kind of interdisciplinary collaboration, working across industries, Creativity is a highly valuable skill, and I'll come back to that one in a moment. 
So Anna Seymour is a really great example of, of um, a great representative of, of the course in a way. I mean, she's, she's a, a really interesting artist and, and human being, and she perfectly exemplifies this, this uh, curious, courageous, connected kind of um, formula that w w we've got here. Uh, Anna is profoundly deaf, and um, so the study of dance was always going to be a different uh, pursuit for her than it might be for other, studio, uh, other students. And yet she was so deeply curious. She asked the most insightful questions. She was the epitome of courage, of, of studying dance in a situation where she could not actually hear the music. So what we did was we installed um, subwoofers in the studios that resonated through the floor. So any bass notes, she could actually feel them and feel the rhythm in, of the music in that way. Um, and uh, now that she's been so successful in her career, she's a you know, terrific dancer, she's become connected. People immediately noticed her capacities and what she had to offer. For example, her work in Cage Physical Theatre, Ballet Lab, and the Delta Project, which is actually a, a, um, a, a dance company that's uh, dedicated to the work of deaf dancers, which she was, you know, um, fundamental in initiating. And they did a project while she was still at, at uh, university, they did a project at Deakin itself. So, look, she's a, a, a great example of what it's possible to do in uh, the course at Deakin. Just to touch on creative entrepreneurship, because I think this is something that the course and the way that it's designed, we really aim to foster through um, the structure and the units that, that we have, particularly in that final year, to really ensure our students are ready to not just get jobs, but to make jobs. Artists today are creating new business models in really inventive ways and inventing new roles for themselves, not only in the arts, but right across the arts. And, you know, we have many, many graduates who demonstrated that, the ways that they go out and, and, and make things happen. I met Mac as a really inspired undergraduate student in the acting studio uh, when I was teaching him. And he stood out straight away. He's got a real energy about him and he was one of those students that hang back after class and want to ask you questions about how did you get an agent and uh, how did you start uh, doing television work and all that sort of stuff which I always love uh, doing and walking up the corridor chatting to students about that sort of career focused uh, those career focused goals and Mac was one of those students and has gone on um, to do great things and coming from a really interesting and challenging background mac actually moved to wodonga from a kenyan refugee camp in 2009 and then driven to become uh, an actor he moved to melbourne and started the acting course at deacon and he's since gone on to do work in Newton's Law, in Get Cracking, in Blue Crush, and most recently uh, in a really great role in the very excellent Mr. Dundee, the new Crocodile Dundee movie. Creativity and these kind of soft skills as they're referred to across industries are highly desirable. But I like to think about them um, following uh, sociologist Richard Sennett as hard skills because they're actually, you know, they, they require practice. They require training. They're not just something that we're born with. They're not inherent. And so this is something that in terms of the course is preparing you for all of these, these highly valuable and desired skills collaboration, communication, the ability to, to experiment creatively, to innovate, to come up with creative ideas. And this is what the world really needs from creative, uh, from artists, right, at the moment, is that creative solutions to real problems. And so that's, you know, one of the things about the course is that we also are, are looking at real world situation, real world context, we're responsive to real world problems and giving those opportunities to practice all of these things in real world settings. The facilities are world class. They're incredible. They're gigantic. They're state of the art professional uh, black box training spaces that I uh, was introduced to as a student and I still use. I never left using them because they're the best. They're some of the best 
rehearsal rooms and theatres in Victoria and you just get to use them whenever you want to. I'm just yeah. thinking of the theatre spaces, but of course there's the workshop uh, where you can make props, where you can uh, work on um, costumes in the costume department. You've got, and that's not even to mention the adjacent, um, you know, facilities with the film and television mm. uh state-of-the-art camera collections and recording collections and microphone collections and the motion um, capture yeah, studio yeah. that you've got as well yeah. at the fingertips. It's all really, uh, yeah, incredible. Sean, tell us about the dance studios because they're equally as amazing and gigantic. <laughs> they, they are. I mean, I can only really reiterate what Miles has said. They're fantastic studios. They are, you know, uh, really uh, some of the best studios you'll find in the country and, and particularly in a, in a university setting and um, they're multifunctional spaces they can be turned into performance uh, spaces so they in, uh, in the morning they can look like a fantastic uh, wooden floored studio that uh, people have plenty of room to move in and at night they are transformed by you know theater lighting into into a beautiful kind of context for for dance um, we can we can wheel seats in, we can wheel seats out. Um, you know, we have really very multifunctional function, and um, useful useful studios. So they and they get used, they do get used. We come to how to apply. So there's different de deadlines here on the screen. You can see for non-year 12 students you can apply um, any trimester coming up trimester three. Uh, can apply by November 1st, trimester 1, 2021. You need to get your applications in by the 21st of February. And if you're a year 12 student, you can apply through VTAC uh, in September 2020, up to the start of trimester 1 in 2021. And in dance, we require a portfolio to be considered for entry into the course. It's not an onerous thing to do. It's pretty straightforward. We just need uh, either 30, up to 30 seconds of video that shows you moving or dancing in any format, any context that you like. You can also provide some photos if that helps. And we also need a, a, a 250 word statement that explains your influences, your experience, your motivation to study and what, how you understand dance practice, what it, what it means to you. Um, this is really helpful for us to determine how we think you'll fit into the course. It's just, you know, share your passion with us. That's what we really want to see. Mm. So, you know, talk to our um, admissions. I'll come at the end with a phone number you can call, but, you know, here are some ways that you can also, um, other ways you can come in if you're worried about that, that you're not going to meet those ATAR. Um, there's lots of support uh, available at Deakin. There's, you know, peer mentors, there's, um, helping one another. We have fantastic learning support. So if you are, you know, you're a little nervous about academia and academic um, skills, we've got plenty of people who are incredibly friendly and our academic staff on in arts and performance are amazing and very, very friendly and approachable. Um, here's our um, phone number and an email to contact us, get in touch if you've got any other questions. And Please join us uh, for the Q&A sessions, uh, 1.30 for dance, 2 p.m. for drama, and there'll be live chat available throughout the day that you can, you can send in your questions and, and we'll come back to you. Also, please download our Creative Arts booklet, just features some of our staff work and students work and attend a virtual campus tour and look at some of the work of our students that's available online as well on the open day platform. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope to talk to you in the Q&A. Thank you so much and Thanks goodbye. Guys. Bye.